this edition is all about art discussion. So we'll be talking about art today. My name is Okwemi Richardson Owebo and you're welcome to Blue Bloom's Art World channel. In this world, we learn everything about art and there is always, always a content for my lovelies, my wonderful parents and my super awesome teachers. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about the branches of art. So as creatives, it should be beyond the practical. So as we try our hands on creating things, making new things, trying to um, work with materials, we also need to have a knowledge of the elements we use, the principles of using these elements. In fact, the whole theory aspect of what we do. So that when people ask us, oh, can you please talk about this? You know what to say. You have a full knowledge of colors, lines, and so on. So this edition is about that. It's for us to have a full knowledge of the theory aspect of art. Okay, that being said, so today's topic again is the branches of art. Okay, let's discuss. So, we start with what is art? So what is art? So art is a means of self-expression, thought and idea and how you bring it out. So art is a general name given to any skillful activity. You create that, you create things, you make something, you add um, value to some to an object. So um, so art is that's, that name given to all these skillful activities. Now art is a universal language. It is a universal language like everybody speaks art. It is understood by everyone. I can make a painting now and keep you. But you still understand what I'm trying to say. Art is a universal language, spoken and understood by everyone. So it, this just simply means that um, art has a way of getting through to everyone. Everybody understands it. Why? Because it is in different faces. It is in different aspects. And because of these different aspects, it makes it easy for everyone to speak it and understand it. So now, art, art is divided into two aspects, two major aspects. So art is in two major aspects, and these aspects are visual art and non-visual art. So we have the visual art, and then we have the non-visual art. So the visual art is the art that uh, appeals to the vision, art that you can see, while the non-visual art is the one that appeals to our emotions. So it's, it's the art that we feel. You can't, you can't um, tell what it is by by you saying it or you can tell how awesome that art is by you feeling it by you um yes you see the person who gives the gesture yes but you can only tell the the quality of that art by what you feel by um its effect on your emotion its impact on your emotion so let's dive into branches of art so like i said Art is majorly divided into two aspects. We have the visual art, and then we have the non, and then we have the non-visual. Visual art appeals to the vision, and non-visual art appeals to the emotions. Now, now, visual art can be divided into two: one, fine art, and two, applied art. So we have one. Find that and then we have apply that. So now find that um, has to do with aesthetics, beauty. It's majorly about beauty, to beautify, to add, um, to add, to make something look so adorable, look so awesome, to add beauty to that space or to add beauty to an object. So find that is majorly about beautification. We have to apply that, like I said, apply that is a functional art. So applied art is done to satisfy the need of man. It is done for utility purpose, things that people need in the house. So we are going to dive into what these aspects are all about. So 
for non-visual arts, we have the performing arts and then we have the literary arts. Now, performing arts is the, is the art that has to do with gestures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so it has to do with gesture. Why? Literary art basically has to do with um, writing, intellectual writing, um, story writing. So literary art generally has to do with writing. Okay, so now let's dive in depthly into what these aspects are. So now, remember I said we have the visual art and then we have the non-visual art. So now on the visual art we have fine art and applied art. Now applied art is also industrial art. So now on the non-visual art we have the performing art and then we have the literary art. So now, for fine arts, remember I said fine art is basically done for beautification. So under fine arts, we have drawing, painting, sculpture, and architecture. So I'm quickly going to have some images up to show what these aspects um, are all about. So we have drawing, we have painting, we have sculpture, and then we have architecture so those are the four aspects of art we have on the fine arts remember basically done for beautification yes i know you might wonder uh, why architecture so now architecture this part, the part of architecture that i'm used to this is um, the designing the whole um planning so the whole design of a building so we got to apply our industrial art and this art we can also call it uh, a functional art Yes, all arts are functional. Please don't get me wrong. All arts are functional. But for this particular one, you will understand why it is said to be functional art now. Okay, so it is done to satisfy human needs. Remember I said for utility purpose at the beginning. Yes, so it is done to satisfy human needs. So these are graphics, textile, photography, interior design, furniture design, and industrial design so i'm going to have images up just like i had for fine art so so we have graphics we have textile we have ceramics we have photography we have interior design furniture design and industrial design so you can see now that the, the images i have up a lot of them are actually Done, they are art done either to pass across an information or you're, you're using them actively in your space. So graphic design posters, you definitely are trying to pass a particular information out to the public or to a group of people. And for textile, who doesn't use fabric? We all are covering our bodies, so you, we wear clothes every day. So that's, a, that's a, the, an aspect of art that is satisfying one of the major needs of man. How about the ones like the furniture design? You definitely do have one or two furnitures in your house that you used to sit, you used to write on, or you actually place something that is so fragile on. And then lastly for the industrial art is the is photography also. So uh, photography, photography, yes. It's beyond you take pictures, you keep pictures. Now those pictures, when you take them, they are not just for beautification. You are also trying to keep memories. So in 10 years time, a picture you took like um, 2000, 2000, you can add, you, when you go back to it in 2010, you sure are going to be full of wonderful memories. Full, so full of wonderful memories. So now, for non-visual art. So non-visual art, remember I said, is in two aspects too. Um, we have the performing art and then we have the literary art. So we start with performing art. Now performing art is the aspect of art has to do with the use of body movement or gestures. Also sounds and redeeming words to express one's ideas. So on the performing art, you're basically, it, it, it's an art that has to do with um, the artist used, using body movement, basically body movement, basically sound. So on the performing art,
as we have three aspects. So we have the drama, we have the dance, and then we have music. So now you can see that exactly what I've just said. Under performing arts, imagine how can you act? You create a drama without moving your body. You definitely will move your body. So you're like, hey, sit. I'm talking to you right there.
find an applied arts, the individuals that specializes in this aspect of art are called artists. So I'm going to have that up. And now for the individuals who specializes in performing and literary arts. Now, this particular aspect is in two forms. So for the individuals who specializes in performing arts, they are called artists. But for the, for the individuals who specializes in literary art, they are called writers. So but when you put them together as a group, you can still refer to them as artists, but um, sometimes you just want to separate it and just have the individuals who specializes in performing art as artists and then those in literary art as writers. Okay, now for crafts, the individuals who specializes in craft are referred to as artisans. So they are referred to as artisans. So, that, so that's bead maker, that carver, that um, potter, that blacksmith. When you put them together as a group, they are referred to as artisans. But they definitely do have their individual names, just like you have painter, sculptor, photographer, architect, you have the um, you have the actor, you have the actress, you have the journalist, you have the poet. So that's the way they have their individual names. When you put them together as groups for the fine and apply that, I will take it again for the fine and apply that, you call them artists for the performing arts, you call them artists you call them artists for the literary arts you call them writers and for the crafts you call them artisans or craftsmen wow so we can see that there's a whole lot to learn in the world of art writers of art is one of those topics in, in one of those topics in art that simplifies the whole scope of art so it helps us to know where to dive into in the world of art so which of the branches of art do you find interesting in the fine arts applied art performing art or literary art i would really appreciate your comments in the comment section please don't forget to subscribe like and share it definitely will go a long way it will also help to create more awareness on how important art is in our everyday life see you next time bye